All right, guys, so continuing on with my Empyrean Galactic Survival Sci-Fi game sound design, <laughs> this one is really exciting. I really liked how this one turned out. This one is called Warp Drive, right? Because in the game, you can uh, collect this thing called Pentaxid, and you refine it, and you put it in a warp tank, and then you just <laughs> you warp out to a different planet, and it's pretty cool. So this big warp tank is, like, really radioactive, and I was like, okay, if I'm, if I'm standing next to this thing, and it's kind of just chugging, it's kind of moving, this mechanical, futuristic machine... What does that sound like, right? So uh, I wanted to kind of work with this sound and kind of make it almost a panoramic kind of thing where it's kind of, there's motion, it's moving in a circle. So if you got headphones on, then you're gonna enjoy this one. So here we go. So that one's a lot of fun. And that's just two notes right there. So I'm just playing two C's, right? So if we just did one a little higher up here. It almost feels like there's this energy kind of just like pumping and moving around around your head, right? So that was kind of the uh, idea for that guy. So let's go ahead and recreate this one. So I hope I remember every value because this one is kind of, there's a lot of weird tweaking going on for this one. Okay. So let's get into it. So right click and knit preset. So the first thing we're going to add, or we already have is an oscillator, obviously, and we're going to go to 11, right? It goes to 11. I wonder if that's why they chose that. That's actually kind of funny. Okay. So let's go target this guy here. So <laughs> the uninspiring saw wave, but Yuhi saw wave sounds so good to me. Like once you just kind of turn this up here and oh, it's nasty. Okay. So we're going to go to 11 here. So detune is going to be 20. Uh, we were close here, so we got 20. Okay, it's pretty cool. So just double checking these, we are fine. We don't have to change any of these guys. Okay, so we have this first oscillator, and then we're going to add a noise. So this one's going to be white noise in stereo. So let's click this guy, white noise, and then we're going to change this to stereo. Now, I believe all this is still going to be default, so we have basically this. Right, kind of a gross sound, but the charm is sending this through a comb filter. And like I said before, the comb filters in Zebra are just amazing. One of the best ones I've personally heard. So click here and then do our first comb. Now this guy is going to be on uh, the, the first one, comb one, is going to be on diff comb. <laughs> so comb one, select diff comb. And then if we play some notes, we don't hear anything, right? Because we have to give it some input. So the input's going to be 100. We're kind of getting that. Now our dampening is going to be 13.5. And then our feedback, 88. And even there, just an oscillator, a noise oscillator, and a comb filter with a couple knobs turned, it already sounds pretty cool. Just mechanical machine. God, I love that crap. Okay, so moving on from this one. So if we follow our, I guess our signal flow down, right? We did the oscillator, the noise, the comb. We go down over here and what the heck is happening over here? So this is the, gonna be the pan section and we're modulating this by LFO2 by 60. So let's first uh, add LFO2 here. So LFO2, let's add this guy and Basically, this LFO is controlling the panning of both of these different sounds, right? Both of the lanes. When one of them is going right, the other one's going left, and vice versa, right? So they're kind of playing in tandem here. You'll see this here in a second. So LFO2, this modulation depth is 60, and if you want to crank it a little bit more for that stereo field, then go ahead and crank it as well, but always follow the next one, which we're going to get to in just a moment. So LFO2, what's this guy doing? So this is a sine wave, and this is going to be at one second. So one second here. And the rate is going to be in the center. I mean, you can change the timing if you want to, but basically LFO2 is just moving this stuff around, right? So LFO2, one second, and really nothing we have to uh, do there. Okay, so that one's done. And if we scroll down over here, what's also happening? <laughs> we're, we're modulating the volume again with LFO2. So let's go ahead and add LFO2 again down here. So not only are we doing things like spatially left and right, we're also doing volume kind of forward and backwards, I guess. <laughs> okay, so... With that guy, this LFO2 is going to be 48, so we can bring this to 48, something like that here. So 
So it almost sounds like it's going in a circle around our heads. And this is just one lane. Okay, let me just double check. Okay, so I did use a lane compressor on this guy. I usually like to use these ones. So for this guy, let's turn this on. And I believe a lot of this is going to be default. We're just increasing the compressor and a little bit of the output. So compressor is going to be 8.5. And then the output for this guy is 4.5. And we're bringing down the output. So let's go ahead and bring this up 4.5 and let's bring our main output down to, what do we have here? 64, so let's bring this down to 64. All right, so with this guy, there's a couple things we need to also do on our uh, comb filter. It's down over here at the bottom. This flavor is going to be, good God, I moved that here. There we go. The flavor is going to be 36, so. 36, and then our distortion. God, Clorida did it again. Uh, 87. There we go. We're starting to get kind of mechanical there. All right. Okay, so this one is cool. Um, I believe that's it. We should address the envelope here, which uh, we have our tag zero, decay, 50, sustain. What do we have here? 72.5, 72.5. And then for our release, 56.50. So 56.50. There we go, that sounds pretty nice. And then the delays and all that are gonna carry it a little bit later on. Okay, so this part is done, so we can go ahead and mute this first lane and kind of focus on the second one. So if you wanna to listen to the second lane here, let's mute the original here. And this is kind of like the patch that we did uh, before, right? So there's kind of like that low end that's kind of carrying like the meat and chunk of that. And then this lane, it's almost like that higher end, kind of metallic -y, kind of distant, dis dissonance, <laughs> dissonancy sound there that kind of uh, goes in hand with that guy. So with that being said, for, uh, let me see, make sure we're targeting the right one. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so with this guy, we're gonna be adding a noise, so our second noise oscillator. And for this one, we're gonna be using pink noise on stereo. So noise two, let's change this to pink noise on stereo. And I believe we have everything. We need to bring the width up, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, the width is going to be 86. So width is 86. And just check if I'm not crazy here. So on that first noise, oh, we did bring the width up all the way. That's right. To so bring the width up all the way on the first noise and then 86 for the second one. So again, we have noise. Really good sounding noise too at that. Okay, so for this guy, next we're going to go into comb two, so noise into the second comb filter. Now this guy is going to be on dissonant for the comb two, which you're going to go to dissonant, which is one of my favorites here. And then pre-fill is going to be zero, input's going to be 56. There we go. And then our dampening is just a little bit here at 3.5. Because we're already using pink noise, so it's kind of already dampened to begin with. And then our feedback is going to be 100 and then tune up an octave. <laughs> there we go. Pretty cool. So now this one is kind of loud. So what we can actually do is bring down this volume manually to uh, 11. So let's bring this down. it's kind of not really the main focus of the sound, right? It's kind of like working off the main kind of engine-y thing. All right, so next up, we're going to go into a shape, which if we scroll down is going to be wedge, which is a really nice one too. So shape and then wedge for this guy. Let's scroll down. So shape and then wedge. And then for our depth, we're going to be adding 36 here. And then edge, I think we added a little bit, 82. And then for our input, this is going to be 
almost kind of has like a like a radiation sound, I guess. I don't know, something's <laughs> something's not right. <laughs> that's uh, that's the key takeaway for that. So for this uh, second comb filter, if we look here, we have this uh, this tone. Right, kind of that thing. So we're going to double click this into the middle and we're going to modulate this by LFO3. So let's click here in LFO3. And then this amount is going to be 32. <laughs> so it's definitely something's wrong there. It's obviously too fast. Okay, so this guy, we're going to go to 10 seconds for this LFO here. 10 seconds. And then for our rate, we're going to drop this down a little bit more to 54. So bring that down to 54. And I believe that's all we changed here. Yeah, so now... It's going to consistently change, but not so obvious and weird sounding. Okay, so I believe we have all this set up for our stuff here. So we can go ahead and unmute this guy. So now we have this basic lane done here. Now this is the part where I was kind of saying where these things play off each other. So with this pan mod, we're also going to select LFO 2 down over here. And then remember, this is positive 60. So here we want to go negative 60. So if you listen to both of these now. <laughs> that like mechanical thing and this like lane two radiation thing, whatever we want to call it, are kind of like always going one's left, one's right, and they kind of cross each other and, you know, always move around. So going upon that, we are doing the same thing down here with the volume on LFO2 down here. So select LFO2, and then this depth is also going to be negative 48. So negative 48. Yeah, so they're constantly switching places, which is a lot of fun. And then our second lane compressor, which I do believe we added. Yep, second lane compressor. And then for this one, I believe most of the same. The compression is going to be 16.5. And then we're going to turn our output down to negative 17.5. So yeah, that's what we have so far. So now comes the fun effects to really brighten our day. So the first thing that we're going to hit this with is going to be an EQ. We can actually, we're not even going to use this mod effects. As you can see, that's kind of a disabled there. So the first cell here, technically number two, is going to be an EQ. And if we look at this guy, kind of the same thing as before, right? We're removing some of the mud that kind of just comes with it and then increasing the nice low stuff and then kind of dipping down the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, high end. And this part is to taste. If you want some more of those high frequencies, then don't bring it down too much. You know, it's really up to you. And let me just double check my modulation matrix. Okay, we're good here. And next up is going to be this distortion, which these this distortion here is really nice. And this guy is going to be tube class A, which is going to be default. The input is 5.2, so a little bit more than default. <laughs> And then here we're boosting a little bit of the lows at 2.4 on the post filter. And I believe that is good for this one. And then next we go into a delay. So let's click here and then select our delay. So this guy is going to be one second and one second. So one second and then one second again. And we're, I believe these are going to be defaults, and then our mix is going to be 27. And the reason that this is not really tempo locked is really because it's not necessarily part of a, a musical song, right? So there's not really a tempo, so to speak. There's just, I guess, the time of it, and you can even kind of hit it. Kind of play out the one second delays, but if you are using something like this in a track, then you probably want to change these delay times to something uh, that your BPM would make sense, right? One over four or some something like that. 
Okay, so for this guy, I don't think we're using any of this stuff because I kind of wanted the delays to be right there because you're kind of supposed to be right in front of this thing moving. <laughs> Anyway, so moving on from this guy, next we have this new rev. So let's go here and click this new rev, which is really a nice sounding reverb. So our pre-delay is going to be 34. So bring this up just a little bit there. And then our size 124, we got to go a little bit bigger than uh, what we have by default. And then decay 50, dry wet, we can bring this up to 39. Let me get a little bit more, <laughs> a little more wet guys, a little more wet. And then our tone, so generally what's kind of funny with this reverb is generally I bring this tone knob to the left to kind of remove some of the higher annoying fr frequencies that would get reverberated. But for this patch, it really kind of made sense to push to the right. So anyway, so this tone's gonna be 34. All right, so last but not least, and this is gonna be kind of the fun part of all this, is that in this XMF filter, this is kind of like our main filter that's at the very end of our chain that we're kind of using to, I guess, drive this, <laughs> warp drive this patch here. So XMF3, let's go ahead and add XMF3 right over here. Now for this guy, we're using the default low pass four or four pole technically. And then the analog here is which is gonna be fine. And then I believe we're, yes, <laughs> we're doing a little bit of modulation again <laughs> with LFO three. So with this cutoff, let's uh, bring this down just a bit here and then select LFO three for this guy. And then the depth is going to be 22. <laughs> So with this, we can kind of bring this down. And even if we play something, this LFO is still gonna be slowly moving that cutoff, kind of still making it alive. And once we want to bring it in. And last but not least, we have a little bit of overload here at 14. Makes it kind of nasty there. And I believe we have everything covered in this one. Um, yes. So, yeah, so this one, is, it was a lot of fun to make. I know it's a little bit quicker making this, like remaking this like this, but this one definitely took a little bit of time to kind of get the motion right and just the right mechanical sound to it, I suppose. But yeah, so that is Warp Drive. Yeah, so there we go. Hopefully uh, you like this patch. And if you'd like to get a free copy and not have to remake this with me, which I do recommend you do, by the way, but if you don't want to, that's fine. You can get a link in the video description below and it can be yours and you can warp drive to wherever you want to, uh, to go. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.